All right, everybody, it's 6 p.m. We'll uh, call the meeting to order, please. Ready May when you are. Yes, Mayor Holland. Here. Commissioner Taylor. Here. Commissioner Finch. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Messer. Here. Commissioner Vogel. And Commissioner Normile. Here. Thank you. Uh, before we do the opening prayer, I, I uh, was made aware of an unfortunate loss today. Uh, former town employee and tax collector Gail Parker uh, lost Wayne Parker, uh, better known as Pickle Parker. I didn't, I didn't even know he had a real name. Uh, he was one of the first people I met when um, I started visiting Emerald Isle over 20 years ago. Pickle was an excellent man, and I'm sure he'll be sorely missed. So please keep Gail uh, and Pickle and family in your prayers tonight, please. Uh, I'd like to invite to the podium uh, Chief Panzarella to lead us in our opening prayer. Please bow your heads. Lord, thank you for this day and for your many blessings, Lord. We ask you to watch over us as our board of commissioners and town officials conduct the town's business tonight. We're thankful for each and every one that's here. We ask you that you look over us, guide us, and protect us. We ask all these things in thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chief. Uh, please rise. Let me make a motion to yes, sir. Uh, excuse Commissioner Vogel. All right, it's a motion on the floor to excuse Commissioner Vogel from uh, tonight's meeting. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion is passed. Thank you. Yes, sir. You would please uh, stand with me and uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, item number five would be the adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt? So move. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is passed. Uh, next up will be public announcements. Uh, we're now taking uh, applications for the Emerald Isle Fishing Tournament Scholarship uh, Program. Applications are open now. Uh, application window will close at the end of March. Uh, we have six scholarships. Uh, hats off to Commissioner Mark Taylor, the Fishing Tournament Committee, and uh, all the volunteers, uh, contributors, and fishermen. Uh, $18,000 over six scholarships. So if you know of a, a graduating senior in uh, the surrounding area that is pursuing a uh, further education in marine science, please encourage them to apply. Golf cart raffle tickets available online. The winner will be selected at 4 p.m. on March 11th at the Emerald Isle St. Patrick's Day Festival. American Red Cross Blood Drive will be held February 17th from 1 to 5.30 p.m. in the Community Center. Storytime and pre-K play is Monday at 9 a.m. or every Monday at 9 a.m. in the Community Center. Police Educating the Public. Next uh, event will be February the 21st at 10 a.m. here in the town boardroom. The Golf Cart Advisory Committee meeting will meet again on February the 21st at 5.30 p.m. here in the town boardroom. Our next Coffee with a Cop is February the 23rd at 9 a.m. in the town boardroom. Our next Planning Board meeting will be held February 27th at 6 p.m. here in the town boardroom. And our next Neighborhood Watch Board meeting will be March 7th at 4 p.m. at the Police Department. Keep your fingers crossed for great weather after missing it for three years in a row. Uh, Emerald Isle St. Patrick's Day Festival is slated for March the 10th. Uh, the rides preview will be March the 10th from 3 to 8 p.m. That's rides only in the Emerald, Am Emerald Plantation Shopping Center. And our festival will be held March 11th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m in the Emerald Plantation Shopping Center. We've been stymied for three years in a row. I know everybody's really excited for that. I know I am. And our next Board of Commissioners meeting will be held March 14th at 6 p.m. That would do it for public announcements. Uh, we'll move into our uh, public comment segment. Uh, there was a sign-up sheet if you missed it in the back of the room there. Uh, no big deal, but uh, now be the opportunity. You have three min minutes to come to the podium and uh, 
Make public comment on anything you see fit. Do we have anybody signed up for public <laughs> comment tonight? We did not have anyone signed up for the general <clears throat> public comment section. Okay, thank you. All right, next item up would be our consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is passed. And I'll invite up Chief Mike Panzarella for some employee recognitions for the Emerald Isle Police Department. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to come back before you once again. Um, always great to stand at the podium and talk about good things that are happening with inside the Emerald Isle Police Department. On the screen, you can see Officer Jordan Goodrum. Exactly four years ago today, Jordan joined our team. Jordan's being recognized tonight for his completion of Police Officer 1 in the POCAT. This involved 12 hours of incident command, 72 hours of breath testing, 40 hours of crisis intervention training, 24 hours of criminal investigation through traffic enforcement, 16 patrol traffic electives, and 16 hours of officer choice elective courses for a total of 180 hours. When our POCAP was designed, it was designed as a career path with a monetary incentive. Yet it takes a dedicated individual to achieve each and every one of those steps. So tonight, I would like to congratulate Jordan on a job well done in obtaining the rank of Police Officer 1. Next on the screen, you will see uh, Officer Brian Bedell. Brian uh, came to us after retiring from the Pennsylvania State Police after doing 25 years. Brian moved to Emerald Isle in 2017. <coughs> Brian recognized that he still had more to offer um, in the field of law enforcement and decided to uh, attend basic law enforcement training at Carter Community College, which he graduated in 2021. Brian joined our team as our records administrator in 2022, and on January 23rd, 2023, he accepted a position um, as a full-time Beach Patrol officer. Next on your screen, you'll see Mark Vesley. Mark retired from the United States Marine Corps, where he spent most of his time uh, as a military police officer. Mark went through basic law enforcement training and joined the North Topsail Police Department in 2011. Um, Mark and Brian both um, joined our team in April of 2022, except for Mark came to us as our permitting clerk, um, and Mark has accepted the role of records administrator, um, and that was effective January 2023. Uh, tw I'm sorry, January 23rd, 2023 as well. Very fortunate to have both of these individuals and very happy of all three of these folks I brought before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right, uh, item number 10, uh, we'll invite up Matt Zapp with an update on the progressive goals list for the town. Well, Mayor, as we uh, work through, we're going to try to pull up the 2023 proposed draft list on the screens for everybody in the audience to see. And in front of each of the elected officials here tonight, we should have a hard copy of the same. Uh, the document that you have in front of you should have a draft 2023 list, the draft 2024, the draft 2025, and then behind those pages, you will also have the checklist of accomplishments, which we're extremely pleased to show you from 2022, 2021, and the first year that we put this document into place in 2020. So when we now have three years of sourced support documentation of strategic <coughs> planning and execution on behalf of the board and the town staff. And what you have before you for the draft 2023 list is where we'd like to draw your attention to tonight. The green sheet for us indicates green meaning go. Uh, these are the items that the board has indicated to town staff that we would like to initiate in 2023. This is the zero to 12 month prospectus. Really goals that you've established for January 1 of 2023 through December 31st. If these goals do require additional funding, these goals would then be placed into the hopper for our budget consideration for fiscal year 23-24. But a majority of these goals will be either reoccurring or identified within an existing budget or funding stream. I'll just take a few minutes to highlight it for the benefit of the audience and those that weren't at our plenary planning session in January. 
but obviously our number one and most important goal as a community is the fiduciary responsibility of setting a balanced budget to meet state guidelines and criteria, but as well as uh, using our tax dollars to the best of our abilities, and that would be due no later than June 30th. That's our top goal at number one. And continuing down at number two, we do have beach safety, which has a myriad of tasks, identified time periods and goals to make sure that our beaches remain safe. Item three focuses in our planning department. We've already updated phase one of our unified development ordinance and that passed in the January meeting uh, here at the board. Phase two is set to occur between now and July period of this year. And item number four, is discussing fire station one and two building improvements. We've already set out a request for proposal where we're trying to receive uh, design build firms to help us with future uh, fire and EMS services and the physical brick and mortar that would be required to provide those services. Item five is execution of additional stormwater projects specifically with FEMA funds. And we'll take this opportunity to say today uh, to remind the community that's both tuning in online as well as here in the audience that currently we have a $9.8 million FEMA grant award, a $535,000 FEMA grant award, and nearly $1.2 million in ARPA dollars, and then we have an additional pending $2.6 million grant that looks favorable to us. So bird in the hand, just north of $12 million and an opportunity for near $15 million of specific project funds that will not come out of local tax coffers. Six, again, is more stormwater work at Cape Emerald. We've already made immediate repairs to the Cape Emerald Inlet Pipe, and this will help all the residents that reside in Cape Emerald, specifically those on the north side of their subdivision that pertain or live uh, adjacent to the pond. So those repairs were made last week by Public Works. Item seven, uh, public beach accesses. This is a pending project, $825,000 total. Uh, cost per walkway is approximately 82.5, and we have up to 10 locations that have been identified, and we're awaiting FEMA final approval on that award. Item number eight is continued increased public awareness, and specifically targeting in our new branded Beach Heroes program, which we had an opportunity to highlight again today at our annual hospitality realtors meeting. And we're going to continue to do those things in communication strategy. Item number nine is replacing storm-related equipment. This is for storm readiness, such as dump trucks, tractors, loaders. In the event of a storm, we'd be able to be more responsive, and uh, having newer equipment on site will help us do that. Uh, number 10 is McLean Spell Park. This is an opportunity to consider the improvement of trails, exercise stations, <clears throat> picnic shelters, things of that like. Uh, number 11 is a radio system upgrade. This is also using FEMA 428 dollars. Uh, this is a, a very large-scale project near half a million dollar of repairs and updates to keep our staff in swift communication to 911 dispatch. Again, this is a non-local dollar purchase. Number 12 was discussion on how to best use Powell Bill funds, combining both this current fiscal year and next fiscal year. Uh, this would complete asphalt repairs dominantly on Coast Guard Road, and we, ought to, we would like the board to know we've already secured those prices and we're beginning that process. Additional repairs uh, are being targeted on Sound Drive and elsewhere across the community. Sidewalk installation potentially at Lee Avenue and additionally at uh, Station Street Parking down towards the point. And then item 14, the continued conversation and importance of the boat, uh, boat ramp navigational channel in Bogue Sound's relocation and want to let the board know that there's been a date set for another scoping meeting with Moffitt and Nickel and all involved parties in that project. Regarding item 15, fleet vehicles. Uh, we are now in a lease program where we take our vehicles, we run them approximately three years or 36,000 miles, and we're pleased to report that we received back north of $111,000 in the last 12 months of proceeds, and we just sold a Jeep back yesterday, and we received an additional $16,000 in positive revenue benefit and that was a, a beach patrol vehicle. So at this point, what we're doing is working very hard to keep our staff and newer equipment. We're lowering our maintenance costs to near zero and putting us in a net neutral or even sometimes revenue positive situation. Item 16 is the continued work on the yard debris site in Pelletier. This helps us, as you know, we're making roughly 36,000 annual stops uh, residentially to pick up yard debris. And those stops then would fill the truck, and those trucks would be able to go to a recycled station on NC-58. 
Item 17 is NCDOT's Coast Guard Road. This was the turn lane extension off of Highway 58 East that you see is nearly complete at this point. And because of our data that we were able to pull with our camera system and traffic data, we had a great conversation with DOT and they were able to move this project up to first quarter 2023. Uh, so at this point, they're doing finish work along the berm and then you'll see restriping occur uh, specific to item number 17. Item number 18 is a difficult one. We've had uh, Chief Bill Walker on staff. May will be his 36th anniversary as a full-timer here, and he has been fire chief with Emerald Isle since 1989. So we are preparing for that retirement. We're working internally and externally as in how to replace him, and he has done a fine job of hopefully creating a legacy pathway of individuals within our organization that can help fill some of those vacancies. And then item number 19, is failing generators and installation of permanent equipment. This would help us, uh, not just specifically at the community center with new generation from FEMA funding. In the event that we did have, a cat did have a catastrophic event, that generator would help keep the lights on, keep the building cool or heated, and then allow us to serve uh, meals and food from the community center here off a of leisure lane. Uh, also down Coast Guard Road, these generators will help us keep stormwater pumps operable in the event of long-term power outage. Uh, item 20 would be the consideration and the development of a Hall of Fame process, and we've established a team that will begin working on that. Item 21 was to communicate with NCDOT to discuss additional opportunities to reduce traffic and congestion on 58. Item 22 is the carry-in, carry-out program, and item 23 would be the review of all Christmas decorations and an opportunity for aesthetic betterment uh, specifically to that time period in the year. So we captured each of these items during our planning session and tried to put them on paper. So now at the, this is the point that uh, we would ask the board, did we mistype anything, grab a uh, missed item, want to add one, remove one, uh, things like that. Any would like to veto Chief Walker's retirement, we'll gladly take a no on item number, uh, what number did he fall? 18, we'll keep him in place for another three to five. He would probably be fine with that. So. Uh, but in all sincerity, most of our focus is on the green sheet. And then you can look through items on 2024 and 2025. But this document, in our opinion, as a staff, is really helpful and helps clarify the expectation of the elected officials and how we would help be most effective for you in this upcoming 12-month period. Thank you, Matt. Um, any members of the board have any questions, comments, concerns, additions, deletions, anything like that? Job well done. Thank you, sir. All right. uh, if not, uh, I'll ask for a motion to approve the progressive goals list for the town of Emerald Isle. So I'll moved. Make, I'll make a motion to approve the progressive goal list for the town of Emerald Isle for 2023 through 2025. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion is passed. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. All right, uh, item number 11, we'll have another public comment section, um, <laughs> early citizen input on fiscal year 23-24 budget. Uh, just like our standard public comment, it'll be limited to three minutes per person. Mayor, we had one person sign up. That's Lori Ahuna of Law Blolly Street. All right, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, Lori Ahuna, 320 Lob Lolly Street. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm here tonight representing almost 20 members of the community center. We support many of Candace Dooley's budget requests regarding the center, and we would like to add some of our own. Um, number one, of course, the new gym floor. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I have a photo of what the existing floor looks like at 8 o'clock in the morning after it's been cleaned. It's really bad. Um, however, any new flooring that is installed must allow for the true multi-purpose function of the gym. Uh, I know she's maybe requested high-end hardwood, which I don't have a problem with as long as it will not preclude any of the existing activities. We, you know, uh, classes with weights, the daycare, the blood drives, the indoor soccer, the actual basketball that might take place there. But um, for all the many things, please, whatever you decide on, make sure that it suits the purpose of the community center. 
Um, and also, if you do decide on a wooden floor or something that's hard surface, please allow for appropriate sound insulation because uh, the acoustics will definitely change in there. There's nothing worse than not being able to hear, even though the floor is pretty. Um, new paint for the gym walls. Again, yes, it's, it looks bad, very bad in there. Um, but it, not only does it look bad, but the drywall screws frequently are popping out. Um, so when we're working against the wall, it's a safety hazard. Um, so budget for something bigger than just paint. Uh, roof repair or replacement, please. That roof is leaking. I have a picture of a garbage can that is set in the middle of a gym uh, floor during a fitness class uh, on a rainy day. So it is openly dripping. There might be a mold issue already happening, which is not good. Um, so please take care of that. Uh, I, I know there's been talk about restroom and locker room renovation. Um, you know, the bathrooms are serviceable, but they are definitely outdated, dark and dingy. Um, and also, please, safety for our little daycare kids is paramount while they're in there, um, along with adult members of the gym going in and out. Um, I don't know what's being done, but just wanted to mention that. Um, additional fitness classes. Um, the most popular classes are overflowing on a consistent basis. We need more part-time instructors and more class offerings. Uh, one issue is that the current instructors do not receive the level of compensation that they would receive at other facilities throughout the area. So I urge Ms. Dooley and the board to budget for additional instructors <coughs> and to compensate them all appropriately. Um, I've got a photo of a recent fitness class that has had to move into the gym and it now takes up three quarters of the gym. Um, we had 38 in last week's class and these, uh, this type of attendance is becoming the norm, not the exception. So since COVID, people are coming back in droves and they're staying. It's not just the January phenomenon anymore. Um, the weight room has usable but outdated equipment that is no longer adequate. Uh, I know there are companies that will design a new gym layout within your existing footprint with appropriate updated equipment for our demographic, which we know from our survey is older. <laughs> um, I think members would enjoy 24-hour uh, access to the weight room and the gym, especially some of our first responders. Um, I recommend looking into an access control system that would allow members to pay an upcharge for access outside of the gym's normal hours. Um, in closing, I ask the board to take a tour of the center for yourselves and look at it with new eyes. Do you think it gives the impression that you want visitors and new residents to have of our town? Are you proud of this facility in its current condition? Please do not only heed Ms. Dooley's budget request, but make it a priority this year to transform our ugly duckling into a true centerpiece for our beautiful town. Thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for your comments. Uh, any other comment? Um, early citizen input for the budget? Okay. Uh, item number 12 will be satellite merchant and business registration ordinances up, ordinance updates. Our um, UDO committee recently met and our esteemed Michelle Eitner will give us an update. Hi, everybody. Um, great. There's my PowerPoint. Very excited to come to you tonight. Um, at the budget planning workshop, you all requested that we take another look at um, basically how food trucks are regulated in Emerald Isle. Um, you can see here it's at the top of my very long to-do list, um, but we'll go ahead and get that one um, taken care of. And um, in proposed changes, we're proposing to um, Codify the business registration process as well as update the rules regarding the satellite merchants, which we usually just call food trucks, but it does include produce stands and things like that. Um, we've got a quick section proposing to codify the existing business registration procedure, 
which is administratively carried through the um, planning department since tax billing went to the county, um, but is primarily a tool for fire code compliance in commercial buildings. Um, it's a free one-time registration of brick and mortar businesses, which in the ordinance I'm calling traditional businesses, but I'm up for um, changes in that wording if we want to. Um, and that provides the town with contact information, applicable zoning information for that um, business and connection with the fire department for the annual or semi-annual inspections, depending on the use type. Um, we've got some proposed amendments um, for satellite merchants, and we kind of want to look at why, why is it that we're looking at this. So our goals for the amendments um, is to allow them rather than prohibiting them except for some time, so kind of turning the ordinance upside down. Um, we're looking at allowing another type of eating experience in addition to the other dining options already in town. So we've got formal and casual <coughs> fast food, but adding that food truck would just have another type. Um, it potentially out allows a greater range of food choices in town. Um, I know there's a Thai food food truck that comes around in the area, and that's always an option, and I'm, I'm willing to try new things. Um, uh, it allows a greater opportunity of food trucks to come to areas of town where they um, could make money in the off-season, which provide us with a greater range of food choices throughout town on a cold winter day. Um, allows for food choices in areas that can't or don't support many food choice, many options. Um, we've got the east end of Emerald Isle does not have a lot of uh, food options. Um, I can't promise that's going to improve traffic, but if you have less people hopping in cars to come to the middle of town to get something to eat because they were able to access a food truck, that's always something to keep in mind. Um, one of the important provisions, not because I am a partaker, um, but is to provide food trucks at alcohol establishments. Um, and that's more of a public safety than an economic consideration. Um, you have less folks leaving the bar to try to find something to eat. And it also keeps folks at the bar, keeps them fed, um, and, and making sure everybody's kind of safe with food in their tummies. Um, one of the really important items that we're looking at, um, thanks to Commissioner Normile, is that we've got approximately 1,330 um, seats at our brick and mortar establishments, our eating establishments. Um, in his words, in a perfect world that every inside and outside seat is full at all restaurants are opened and staffed and serving at 100% capacity, the very best we could do at a meal service with three tabletop rotations at every restaurant is 10% of the peak summer population. Um, so 40,000 uh, folks in town, that would be 9.975% of the population. Um, so we're obviously underserving um, the total population when it comes at least to the tourist season um, for eating establishments in Emerald Isle. <coughs> Uh, we were asked to provide three options uh, to the commissioners for a review. Um, it identifies that we've got a couple different regulatory vehicles um, to identify food trucks or satellite merchants. Um, there's different areas where they're allowed to set up. There's setbacks from other uses, um, the seasons, limit of number of permits and things like that. Um, the recommendation of staff and the UDO committee um, was to um, allow a little bit greater flexibility. Um, we saw what our sister beach towns are doing. They've got great regulations set up. They've got a lot of experience in their own communities, and they know what's right for them, but we need to learn what's right for Emerald Isle. Um, and those two things may not align. So our recommendation is to get the experience on how um, food trucks set up and how that economic um, development works for us. Um, we propose that the allowable area is expanded from what's allowed now, but it's only mixed use and business districts, as well as the condo complexes, RV parks, um, and I don't think we have mobile home parks in there. Um, allowing it annual per calendar year um, for the entirety of the calendar year, they, the food truck operator can decide at what point they want to set up, um, so they dictate their own season. Um, the private property owner dictates how many food trucks can set up, when they set up, that kind of thing. So we're 
kind of allowing that flexibility. Um, we're showing this permit would cost uh, $250 a year, um, and that's regardless of how many places or how many times they use it. Um, we did add a provision that all of the associated equipment is located close to the operation, and that's more to cut down on um, extraneous signage that can be that can come along with um, food trucks, and that is the case anywhere. Um, so we did add that in. Um, so this is my typical flowchart when it comes to amendments. Um, we've drafted the proposed amendments. Um, with your approval as go-ahead, um, we'll take it to planning board at the end of this month um, for their review and recommendation. Um, and it would come back to the board um, next month for a public hearing and potential adoption. Any questions at this point on that item? Uh, not for me. Thank you very much for the update. Any questions for Michelle? All right. Like so, we won't uh, take any actions as far as voting on that tonight, but uh, we'll ask for a motion for the public hearing. Uh, ask for a motion to schedule a public hearing for March 14th to hear public comment regarding proposed business regulation amendments. So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is approved. Thank you. All right. Item number 13. The board will consider the appointment of an individual to fill one unexpired term on the planning board. Uh, this seat will be up for reappointment consideration at the April 11th meeting. Uh, along with two other seats. So this, the seat that's open now uh, is not for uh, an extended term. It's to fill the, the unexpected vacancy. And then again in April, that seat will be up for reappointment along with the two other seats that are naturally terming out. So I will let the board proceed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion, if I could. Yes, sir. Before I make the motion, um, uh, it was quite the uh, large group of people and qualified people that applied for the positions and um, went through them all and um, um, highly qualified everyone. It's just a matter of um, picking a person pretty much. But it was amazing all the applications that came in. But this time, I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, Jay Wooten to fill an uninspired term on the planning board that expires in March of 2023. All right, motion's on the floor. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Motion is passed. Um, I will say uh, before we move on there, uh, 14 applications in total. I um, was not part of any committee or, or uh, discussion as far as uh, who, to, who, who would be the best, but I did have an opportunity to review every application and uh, I was seriously impressed with everybody that did. I thank everybody that applied. Uh, there's a lot of qualified candidates up there and I would say to uh, each person that was not appointed, uh, Thank you for your willingness to serve the town. And uh, don't forget that in April 11th, we will have a reappointment, potential reappointment, and two other seats open. So um, if your desire to serve is still there, please apply again. All right, item 14 would be comments from our town clerk, attorney, and manager. No comments at this time. All right. Mr. East. Yes, sir, Mayor and uh, Commissioners, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Zach? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, it's with a, a somber heart that we want to remind everybody that it was a year ago this past week when we lost our very own uh, Captain Paul Cheshire. And uh, we want to sh share with you that uh, in our building, one way that we took the opportunity to, to remember Paul is uh, we circled up uh, courtesy of Greg Hayes' recommendation and each of the team members shared a humorous or a relic or a story of Paul, and we wanted to celebrate his life. So for those of you that were friends with Paul, if he served you in his near 25, almost headed to 30 years of service here in Emerald Isle, we'd encourage you to honor Paul's memory by putting a smile on your face and thinking of something amazing that he did or a turn of phrase that he had or just how he would help us light up a room. And I think that he embodies what it is to be a community police officer. And we thank Chief Panzarella for what he shared tonight. Uh, but remember, these days are limited, and our job is to come in and serve, and we oftentimes come into someone's life on their worst day. Uh, so we hope that we groom additional Paul Cheshires and we can come in and be a positive influence in those situations. So 
uh, if you can, please remember Paul with a smile on your face and share a good story with a friend. Thank you. All right, we'll uh, take comments from the board now. We'll go with uh, Commissioner Taylor. Uh, great meeting. Um, congratulations to Jay uh, on the planning board. Uh, hopefully um, you'll enjoy that time there. I, I spent a couple years on it. It's a very, um, very nice board to be a part of. And um, congratulations. Nice having us an attorney in here. And uh, welcome to the team. Very, very happy to chat with you a little bit. It was nice talking with you. That, that's all I have, sir. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Finn. When, when you were speaking of Paul, I can remember so many times that he's helped me throughout the years and I miss him and I know everyone else has and thank all of you for coming out here this evening um, and lastly I'd like to if my wife is watching tonight I'd like to wish her a happy anniversary tomorrow's 31 years hey, happy anniversary. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you sir Commissioner Messer Oh, I'd like to welcome Brian. It's been a while since I saw you. And uh, in remembering Paul, Paul always fixed my computer when it either broke or I messed it up. So uh, I'll remember, I'll always remember Paul for that. Thank everybody for coming out. And happy Valentine's Day to the ladies. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Commissioner Normile. Robin is a saint. That's all I've got. <laughs> Robin is a saint. <laughs> um, y'all pull, pull for Miss <coughs> Jamie texting back and forth with her. She, she's sick, y'all. Now she's sick. I, I don't know all, all the details. She's got the Carolina crud or something. But I, I'm just glad she is not sitting right here for all the right <laughs> reasons because I don't want it. Thank you, Miss Jamie. I know you do then. Thank you for uh, not coming. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. And she gave me her time as well. Closing statements. I appreciate that. So I've got two items. Proceed, sir. <laughs> the, the first was actually, um, and I've got, I got received some emails from this. That's why I'm bringing it up. Positive email. Um, normally, in our um, uh, front matter to the agenda, we. Consent agenda tonight. It was number eight. Consent agenda. And normally there's some type of budget data in there. By law, by rule, we must disclose anytime uh, we receive additional funds or spend things that maybe weren't allocated, things like that. And so, just want to commend uh, Matt and the team and staff uh, on some smart moves with monies. And I'm just going to highlight a, a couple things. We had some. Increase in revenues come in to the tune of about forty-five thousand dollars. It's a great thing. Uh, really smart on how you treated that five hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars in ARPA fund. That was good right there. That's uh, really that really doubles the money when you think about it. Uh, so great, great work on staff. Uh, Sixteen thousand uh, dollars went into the planning department. Dunes and vegetation to take care of that. Public works uh, got a, a little bit of plus up to cover some things, and also from that sixty-three thousand uh, dollars, going to put in a new heating and air unit at the community center. Parks and Rec another sixty thousand for that Joel Lane walkway and take care of some things out at the tennis court. But there's other stuff in there. I just wanted to thank staff for not only doing a great job and being uh, very open and honest in all, all the things that we do with money, but uh, just the, the smart use and how it was all positioned. And then lastly, as Matt mentioned earlier, um, the realtor people, the brokers, real estate uh, brokers joined us this morning both from Emerald Island and from other towns on both banks, and a few from off the island, and one from Raleigh. They sent a nice email back, good response. Matt gave them, Matt and the department heads gave them uh, updates, and it's their time of year, do this every year, where the brokers ask questions, have a good feel for what's going on with the towns, because they're the ones that 
dealing with those that are, are moving here. So I think it's, it's a good thing. Here's the smart part. At the end, uh, Kat Mathias, Matt, and somebody else that was in here, but uh, took the last 10 or 15 minutes. Great dialogue. And it began with this awkward statement. I don't know, I don't recall who made it. It was early. I was still on my first cup of coffee. But the awkward statement is, how do we utilize all of our real estate assets, the brokers, right, who are dealing with all these tens of thousands of people who are going to visit us this summer, began with this statement. How do we make memories and not become one? I know that's an awkward statement, but here's what happened in the conversation. The real estate brokers uh, from all of our main companies were here and said, well, um, and Anna, uh, it was Anna that was chiming in. Well, I can make you a special QR code. Kat Mathias is saying, well, I can do these special links for you, for you to send out to all the people that are coming here to watch this safety video and about the flags. Try and get them smart before they get here so that we do make memories and not become a memory. I know that's an awkward statement, but this is serious business. We spend a lot of time and a lot of money to position um, our, our assets, our town assets, uh, to ensure everyone has a safe summer. I think maybe in March, at our March meeting, if we could make a special plug out, uh, I think it's worthy of an agenda item. There's a lot of homes that are managed on uh, various social media platforms or web-based <coughs> platforms like VR, VRBO, did I say that? VRBO and, and whatnot. We need to reach out to them too, to those, to our neighbors and our owners that have their own houses that either they are renting or leasing out for summer and get some of our product line into them. Their homes as well, magnets and fusies and so on. And so very productive this morning. I know it's a little long-winded there, as usual. But uh, that's my speech. Thank you very much, sir. Well said. Thank you. Very well said. Um, to close up, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, congratulations to our, our police officers that were promoted. Um, thank you, staff, for everything that you did. Uh, again, uh, remember Gail Parker and uh, Pick rest of Pickles, Parker's family uh, tonight. Um, a very close friend of mine, Ty Cannon, planning board member, works for Bo Boat Banks Water, uh, lost his mother last night. So a, a testament to we don't know uh, how much time we have. Make the most of it and um, keep these people in your thoughts and prayers tonight. Uh, it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, go hug somebody you love. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Have a good night.